you to more innovation from Dr. Molly Soichet, which is my pleasure and honor to introduce to Dr. Molly Soichet. She's an expert in the study of polymers for drug delivery and tissue regeneration. She holds a Canada Research Chair Tier 1 in tissue, tissue Engineering and is a professor of Chemical Engineering and Applied Chemistry and Biomaterials and Biomedical Engineering at the University of Toronto. Professor Shed was recruited at, to the Faculty of the University of Toronto in 1995 with an NSERC award to study uh, her technologies and innovations. She is from Massachusetts Institute of Technology and then moved to a PhD at the University of Massachusetts. Mm, Professor She has so many awards. She becomes an inspiration for so many women, including me. She is appointed as the first Chief Scientific Officer in Ontario in 2018, and in 2019, become the, a member of the Royal Society in UK. It's such a honor to have you here with us. You are an inspiration for me and uh, I'm sure for so many women. I look forward to your talk, Molly. Well, thanks, Anna. That's such a lovely introduction. I, I don't think I, I should say anything. I should just, you know, step off now. <laughs> Anyways, thanks everybody for, um, for participating. I'll just tell you briefly about our research um, in the context of the eye. And uh, let's see. Okay, so really um, what our lab does is we design materials to answer these big questions um, and solve problems in medicine. And uh, really what we do is we design um, polymers. And so we've designed polymers, as you can see here, I'll just grab my laser pointer for, um, for applications in cancer. And then we've designed um, hydrogel, so water swollen materials to deliver cells and therapeutics uh, for a number of CNS disorders. Um, and then also have thought about ways of delivering proteins. So um, in the context of our work in the eye, we've been very interested in delivering protein therapeutics to the vitreous and then having those uh, diffuse uh, into the retina. And we've also been working very closely with Derek Vanderkoy and Valerie Wallace on uh, cell transplantation therapies, which is using our hydrogels as a way to deliver uh, cells to the back of the eye, and particularly those photoreceptor cells that uh, Valerie just introduced you to. And so when we think about ways of delivering protein therapeutics to the eye, we've developed these strategies that are based on affinity interactions. And so this is a project that was led by um, a former postdoc, Anna Del Plas, and we uh, were very interested in delivering a ciliary neurotrophic factor or CMTF to the eye. And we were able to create a system that allowed us to control the release of CMTF uh, once it was injected. So we've created a series of these water swollen materials, hydrogels that are easily injected into different sites. The other thing that we've been very interested in doing is looking at cell transplantation therapy and, and it has already been mentioned by um, Rustam and Valerie. I mean, the great thing about the eye is it's so accessible and you can see what you're doing. And, and also in the context of degenerative diseases, we know exactly which cells are gone and where they need to be replaced. And so one of the hydrogels we um, invented is um, an injectable gel called hyaluronin and methyl cellulose. And it's shown here as just like a blue blob. And um, we've used this hydrogel as a vehicle to deliver cells um, and specifically uh, photoreceptors to the back of the eye. And I think it was um, when we had presented some of this research that I first met Anna and she said, oh, I wonder if these materials would be useful to deliver mitochondria. And so uh, we're very happy to be providing some material to, to Anna's lab to uh, try and answer that question. So this is the, the hydrogel. I won't spend too much time on the chemistry, but really interesting engineering material comprised of hyaluronin and methyl cellulose. And what you see in this very short video is um, 
just how easily it's injected. So we've colored the hydrogel blue just so you can see it. It's basically a gel in our syringe. We apply a little pressure and it flows. And then as soon as it comes out of the needle, it forms a gel. So um, the whole point of this video is just to show you that we can inject this through very fine needles. Um, and uh, you know the size of the blue blob doesn't matter so much, just the fact that it forms a gel as soon as that force is released. And um, in studies that we've done with, with Derek and Valerie's labs, is we've looked at injecting um, cells in this hydrogel to the back of mouse eyes. So with that, we've used a 34 gauge needle. So obviously a very small needle. So this is some of the first work we did. This was um, in collaboration with Derek Vanderkoy's lab and was led by Brian Balios, a PhD student in our lab. And he found that just by delivering cells in the hydrogel, he got a much more even distribution of cells um, in the uh, subretinal space lining the Brooks membrane. Um, and whereas when you deliver cells in saline, they all aggregate. And, and we know that this doesn't just happen with uh, retinal stem cells or photoreceptors, all cells will aggregate in the syringe. And um, even just from a physical perspective, the, the gel does a nice job of distributing them. And then in 2015, we published this paper um, where we um, delivered uh, the RSC derived rod, so retinal stem cell derived rod photoreceptors into the subretinal space. And we were really excited to see that we had a lot of GFP cells. And, you know, we thought that a lot of them were integrating into the outer nuclear layer. And then, of course, you just learned from Valerie that. Um, certainly a lot of this um, integration that we thought we were seeing is probably material exchange. One of the things though that is fascinating and maybe we'll get to it in the Q&A is uh, we've been working with Valerie's lab to see how the hydrogel impacts um, that, that material exchange. And uh, in in vitro studies, we saw that it does in fact um, limit the, the, the material exchange. So Valerie talked about that mitotracker red, mitotracker green experiment. We've repeated it with her lab um, by having the cells in the hydrogel and it does seem to impact that. So, uh, so that's still very early um, data, unpublished data that we're, we're exploring together. Uh, so with that, I'll just stop. It was just meant to be a brief introduction. This is um, the lab uh, two, almost two years ago now when we could get together um, our collaborators and um, our funding. So thank you very much.